My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my God and Angel, intercede for me. There's a particular image, a statue, of Our Lady sleeping just before her Assumption, which I love very much. It's in the central house of Opus Day. Maybe some listeners of Ten Minutes with Jesus might have seen it. One goes into the main house, there in the north of Rome, Villa Tevere. One goes down the steps into the main church, the Palatic Church of Our Lady of Peace, past the tomb of Saint Jose Maria beneath the altar down a few steps towards the crypt and there one comes across this beautiful peaceful image Our Lady there asleep lying on her back it's a place of peace other members of Opus Dei are buried there as I've already mentioned the the founder Saint Jose Maria is just a few feet above her not many feet beneath her is the tomb of Blessed Alvaro the loyal collaborator of St. Jose Maria and his first successor at the head of Opus Dei. Other Opus Dei members are also buried there. So in this place of peace there is Our Lady at peace, somehow transmitting her peace to all around her. St. Jose Maria had great devotion to this depiction of Mary known as her Domitian. There's also strong devotion to this advocation of Mary or this way of seeing Mary in the various Eastern traditions both Orthodox and Catholic the falling asleep of Mary surrounded by the Apostles prior to her being taken body and soul to heaven the image expresses the belief that the Virgin Mary concluded her life on earth without suffering in perfect peace the peace of holiness without any discomfort caused by the consequences of sin no bodily discomfort, no anguish of soul, because there was no sin in you, dearest mother, and no consequences of sin. This devotion leaves open the question as to whether Mary died or not, which the Eastern traditions keep respectfully silent about, and the Church has never defined solemnly on this question. Indeed, the Church has only recently defined the dogma of the Assumption. It was defined in 1950, which is, historically speaking, very recent. And it's the dogma, it's the feast that we celebrate today, at least in the vast majority of countries. In my own country, um, we celebrate it tomorrow. The Pope of the time, Pope Pius XII, was very careful in how he crafted the definition. Defining infallibly Our Lady's Assumption, he said that the Immaculate Mother of God, Mary ever Virgin, when the course of her earthly life was finished, was taken up, body and soul, into the glory of heaven. The Pope didn't include in the definition whether Our Lady died or not. Now of course Our Lady wasn't the first human being to be taken up, body and soul, to heaven. The Old Testament tells us about two others to whom this happened. The righteous Enoch, who appears in the book of Genesis. And we read this about him. Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. And then in the later, second book of Kings, we learn about the prophet Elijah, who was taken bodily to heaven in a chariot of fire, led by horses of fire. It's all very mysterious. In both these cases, we seem to see great holiness, the righteousness of Enoch, the prophet Elijah, who stood up bravely, one man alone, against all the false prophets, to declare faithfully that there is only one true God. Dear God, we ask you to enlighten us. We want this to be a time of prayer. This is not a theology lesson. We're talking to you, God the Father. We're talking to you, God the Son. You, Jesus. We're talking to you, God the Holy Spirit, and you are praying in us and for us. 
but we do want to enter into this mystery as I said we ask you to enlighten us also because this talks to us of our own eternal destiny now we know that the separation of our body and soul and the corruption of our body are a result of sin our body corrupts because it has been corrupted by sin just as we have sinned through our body the book of Revelation teaches us that nothing unclean shall enter heaven this is not a question of mere physical dirt our Lord would often have got dirty he was certainly dirty with his own blood and wounds in his passion this is the dirt of sin and in part here we see the purpose of purgatory to cleanse us of all that dirt, that sin to purify us through fire it is your merciful, your saving fire Heavenly Father so that with our soul purified we can be worthy to receive a new and glorious body at the end of time on the day of your son's second coming when we all rise again with our body this body will be somehow our existing body but totally renewed made new and glorified so that as you told us Jesus the just will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father our father but there is mother I must talk to you I can't just talk about you I can't just talk about the assumption as something theoretical it's linked to you dearest mother you whom I love so much you who never sinned who were full of grace from the moment of your conception you didn't even inherit original sin like the rest of humanity you too were saved by Christ all humanity needs Christ's salvation but you were saved in a more perfect way I see it a bit like saving someone from a deep pit of mud. One can save them before or after. One can save them by pulling them out of the mud after they've fallen in. That's how Christ saved us. We had all fallen into the pit of sin. But a far better way to save someone is to stop them falling into the mud in the first place. And that's how Christ saved you, Holy Mother. The graces of, of his redemption were applied to you in advance you were saved by prevention you were kept from sin and then throughout your earthly life you went from holiness to ever greater holiness as you responded to every challenge which life threw at you you advanced along your pilgrimage of faith pure in mind and body a purity which was also absolute fidelity and when the moment came to release you from this veil of tears You were totally pure, totally clean. There was nothing unclean in you, no stain, no corruption, nothing to prevent you going to heaven, body and soul. Your body had never in any way been corrupted and it could float up to heaven, drawn by God who was your magnet. Your heart yearned only and exclusively for God your Father, for God your Son, for God your Spouse who is the Holy Spirit. And we too found a place in that love because divine love helps us love humans ever more sharing in the infinite and creative love of God for his creatures. Did you die mother? It's possible. In that way you shared more as a co-redeemer with your son who was also sinless, infinitely sinless because infinitely holy who willed to go through death. The love that led you to die spiritually with him in union of love at the foot of the cross might also have led you to physical death. But you certainly didn't deserve death as a punishment for sin because there was nothing in you to punish rather everything to reward. Oh mother, this has been a slightly deeper and denser meditation as I try to get my head around these profound mysteries. But above all, I want to be your child. And I want to place myself ever more in your arms and go deeper and deeper, snuggling myself ever more into your bosom as your little child. And I too, as St. Josemaria imagined, want to ascend to heaven with you, borne upwards by the power and love of the Trinity, with the assistance of the angels. And there with you, 
I will see the glory of heaven and the myriads and myriads of angels and the companies of martyrs and virgins and confessors and priests and married and celibate lay people and those who found holiness in other ways. And we will see you crowned by the Trinity and rejoice in your glory as you are clothed with the sun with a crown of twelve stars and the moon at your feet. And I want every day, dearest mother, to live a little part of that assumption through my daily spiritual struggle by which I rise above my sins and earthly things by the help of grace and through your intercession. I know that I cannot avoid death and corruption, the separation of the soul from my body and this latter's decomposition. But somehow, spiritually at least, may I go up a little bit each day to heaven and so every day in your arms mother becomes a gradual but ongoing assumption. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me.